in the history of automotive engineering. Both are outstanding examples of the great promise of tomorrow by Chrysler. City, Wednesday, December 27th. Hello, everybody. This is Frank Tomlinson, your Dodge reporter, speaking to you from in front of the Tavern on the Green in the heart of New York's Central Park, where a hearty group of press representatives are on hand to witness the start of a historic coast-to-coast -coast run of a modified 1962 Dodge, powered by a gas turbine engine. The test is another phase in the extensive evaluation of this engine by Chrysler, to determine the feasibility of this type engine in passenger cars of the future. A team of Chrysler research engineers, headed by George Huebner, Jr., executive engineer of research, will attempt the 3,000-mile run scheduled to end in Los Angeles on New Year's Eve. Let's join them for this trip in a turbine. California, here we come. We're out of the heavy New York traffic and through the tunnel on the approach to the New Jersey Turnpike for the first leg of our journey. We pick up our ticket and move on. It didn't take long to run into some bad weather, snow squalls in South Jersey. Our first fuel stop is at Willow Grove, Pennsylvania, on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. The turbine takes on a full load of diesel fuel. One of the many different fuels will burn in the next four and a half days. Thursday, December 28th, second day. Back on to the Ohio Turnpike after a short overnight stop in Toledo, where we arrived about 2 a.m., covering the 600 miles from New York in a little over 12 hours. This turbine can really move. It was close to zero when we left at 7 a.m., and it never really warmed up. But it made no difference to our smoothly operating turbine. Sign ahead. Indiana, 34 miles away. Wonder how much snow they have out there. One consolation, it couldn't get much worse. We skirted around Chicago in mid-morning and picked up famed Route 66 as we turned south for the first time into Illinois. The destination tonight is Rolla, Missouri, still a long way off. We're averaging about 52 miles per hour. Not bad under these conditions. take long to gather a crowd of curious onlookers and questioners anywhere on the trip. When we stopped for lunch in Springfield, Illinois, the owner called up all his friends and invited them over for a special show. It wasn't what we had planned, but we enjoyed the visit. The schedule was tight, so we had to take leave of our new friends. of the turbine engine lulls us as the snow-covered slopes of southern Illinois and Missouri roll by with monotonous ease. Latest estimate indicates we'll be in Rolla about 9 p.m. And on we roll. Friday, December 29th, third day. In and out of Rolla, right on skip. 607 miles covered from Toledo yesterday. We run south, out of Missouri, and through Oklahoma, skirting Tulsa and Oklahoma City. Our reservations for tonight are in Shamrock, Texas, 588 miles away. Saturday, December 30th, fourth day. A 
long weekend ahead for our Chrysler team as we begin to close in on our goal. temporarily behind us as we head into the dusty, sage-strewn country of West Texas and New Mexico. But only temporarily as we begin the gradual ascent into the high country and up to the Continental Divide. We're past Albuquerque, elevation almost 5,000 feet. No ill effects on the engine. We can see snow all around us on the mountains, but the roads are clear so we can make good time and enjoy the beauty of the Rocky Mountain scenery. We're not alone. The heavily laden trucks don't slow us down as our turbine dart gets out and around quickly, climbing ever upward. Sunday, December 31st, fifth day. The temperature was 17 below zero as we got ready to leave Holbrook, Arizona on the final leg of our trip. Our air-cooled turbo dart kicks right off and pulls out to lead the way to the coast. and no time to waste. Flagstaff, Arizona, 500 miles to Los Angeles, a good place to spend New Year's Eve. Where did the snow go? Where did the mountains go? We're in California at last, streaking across the Mojave Desert, from 17 below this morning to 75 above this afternoon. Talk about your changing conditions. Can our turbine take it? It sure looks that way. anything that can flow through a pipe, from perfume to peanut oil. Combustion is complete. The exhaust is cool and clean. There is no carbon monoxide, no unburned carbon. Nothing to make small. Time and distance are running out. Route 66 soon loses itself in the sea. Angeles, the city of angels, end of the year, end of the day, end of an important trip for those of us with Chrysler Corporation. Over 3,000 miles from Central Park in four and a half days without a mishap. Three days later, after a rest for the team and a bath for the turbo dart, the Los Angeles press are given a chance to look at and ride in this amazing new automobile with an engine that has only one-fifth as many parts as the reciprocating engine. One spark plug, no antifreeze, and never needs an oil change. It starts with ease and performs equally well in all kinds of weather on almost any kind of fuel. Take it away. And now, what of the future, and what does this mean to you? It means simply that Chrysler has licked many of the problems which had previously impeded gas turbine development. The success of the road test proves such an engine to be practical in a passenger car. It has been announced that Chrysler will build a limited number of these cars within the next 18 months for sale to selected motorists for additional testing under all sorts of conditions. At this time, a rigorous analysis of manufacturing processes and cost is being conducted in Detroit while consumer reaction and interest is being tested and evaluated in selected major markets. 
The turbine engine has moved out of the laboratory and on to the highway. Another step forward from the forward-looking Chrysler Corporation.